So today I am at the main farm at Rockville and I'm going to be teaching you guys how to operate the New Holland T7 315 that we have from Carl F. Stotts and Sons out of Wanakee, Wisconsin. As you can probably tell, I've already got the first drip here cut down as we've been learning to run it and get the hang of it. Now that I feel like I've got a pretty good grip on how to operate it, I'm going to show you guys how to do so. A couple quick things on the outside of the tractor. This tractor has LED headlights all around it, and we've got the 30 foot mower on it. But I'm not going to be talking about that in this video because that's a whole different beast. Now, up front, we've got controls to extend our cylinders and to raise the hitch, which is pretty handy. We also have a button to start the PTO while we're down here. All right, let's hop up in this beast. Okay, now we're up in the cab, and I'm going to lower down the steering column so we have a nice clear view of the dash. Over on our right, we have our wiper blade controls. Over on the left, we have our turn signals, as well as our horn and the lights. And the lights are pretty bright. Up here, we've got the, the switch for the four-way flashers. And over here, we have our left-hand reverser. Right now, it's in neutral. There, it's in park. And then to put it into forward reverse, all you have to do is either push, pull it towards you, push up or down, depending on whether you want to go forward or backward. So that is a summary of what's right in front of you. Down below, you also have your clutch, which you don't ever have to use, your brakes, and your foot pedal. Now, I haven't used the foot pedal because the tractor literally does everything for you. There's really no reason to use that, but you can if you wish. And over here, we have our transmission control. You can move this forward or backward depending on how you want to move. I'll get back to that in a little bit uh, once I start the tractor up. Over here, we've got our three-point controls, our front control to raise and lift the front mower, our engine speed, our engine droop control. This little handy-dandy little switch down here moves the entire arm column back forward or back to adjust to each person, which is pretty nice. Over here, we've got our SEV controls, and over here we have an array of controls that we can do to control to do many different things. Um, up here, you can control the pitch of the front mower. Uh, a lot of these I don't even really know how to use. Auto PTO, uh, think, I'm guessing you can control the fan speed, and there's auto controls for the, for the engine. We have our sequence controls up here that you can use to start and stop your sequence. I might get to that back to that later. Essentially what it is is that you can control a set of actions that you want to the tractor to perform automatically, which is pretty handy. Uh, we've got controls to extend the SCVs, and we have the differential lock, the front suspension lock, which this tractor has the front air, the front end cushions, so it's pretty smooth driving across the ground. And we have our four-wheel drive controls. Over here we have our PTOs to engage and disengage, our trailering brakes, if you have a trailer hooked up with brakes. Over here we have our speed selectors for the PTOs. Uh, we don't have any use for that, especially for, for what we've been using it for, so I'm not going to mess with that at all. And there are a lot of other small things that this tractor has. The less important things, but the pretty cool things front and back, sunshades, pretty nice. Up here we have, if you want to have a charger, you can stick it in there. It's got the adjuster for your rear view mirrors so that you don't have to move. Those are pretty handy. Radio, air controls. I'm not sure if this tractor has it, but I'm assuming this is the heater for the rear view mirrors. Uh, this cuts the lights, I believe, in either the front or back. Here we have our beacon control and our light selector, so you can choose what lights you want to be on in the tractor, which is pretty nice as well. These are the IntelliView monitors. This one is dedicated to the mower, and as well as this. This box is dedicated to controlling the mower. I'll get back to that later and in our next video. 
I'll show you guys how to operate the mower. Here we have the auto steer control. It's just switch. Um, the ISO auto, not exactly sure what that is because I haven't had to use it. LED light controls up here as well as the battery disconnect right here. And I was told that if you hit the switch while driving the tractor, it will kill it. So we're not gonna touch that one. <laughs> and I've basically covered all the controls in the cab. I'm gonna start the tractor up and show you guys what it feels like. Uh, I can tell you right now, it's extremely quiet and I don't even know, I can't even tell when it's on. So first thing you are gonna wanna do when starting up the tractor, is press the clutch in. Make sure it's in park. Always make sure it's in park. Now she started up. The monitors are going to beep at me once they're going. All right, so we've got our monitors. I'll cover this one later. Uh, the reason that there's two monitors because they don't have a way to combine them yet. Uh, I've heard that's in the works. But up here we can see time, date, engine hours, engine droop, which is this little switch right here. It's been set at 80. But if I rotate this dial, I can adjust the engine droop. Keep that right at 80. Fuel economy, work conditions, mowing, time left to completion, speed, fuel, fuel rate, fuel economy, and your engine power. So that is most of the important controls to running this thing. I'm gonna start moving the tractor now and show you guys how to adjust certain controls. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the transmission control up here. So you're gonna to wanna to move the tractor. Now, the first thing you wanna do with this tractor is make sure that the front mower is raised, which is used with the front adjustment knob here. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is get your left-hand reverser. Right now it's in park. Put it in the neutral position. Pull it forward. And then press it up. Now the tractor is set to move forward. So now the next thing you're going to do is grab the control and move it forward. Now you're going to notice that as I move it forward, there's going to be a little blue bar that comes up all the way up to the top as I increase my speed. This is your range in this particular gear. So as I move it forward, the tractor will increase the engine speed and start moving. Pretty simple. Now let's say I want to slow down. I have these little plus and minus buttons down here. That selects my gear. So now I'm in F1, forward, first gear. And I can adjust my top speed by rolling this dial here. That and sets my that sets my top speed. So as I increase that, the the engine will adjust the tractor speed with where this blue uh, blue bar should be. So let's say I want to go a maximum of five miles an hour. I'm going to increase the engine speed all the way up. Max speed is 2.7 miles an hour. I'll increase that to five. Woo! Five miles an hour. And there you have it. Now I want to switch back up to a maximum speed of 14 miles an hour. Hold on to your horses because this thing has a lot of torque. Shifts up to 14 miles an hour all on its own. Very simple. And I can go up to F3, the max speed of 26 miles an hour. I have taken this thing up to uh, 20, no, 30 miles an hour. So now I'm going to want to slow down because I'm going road speed across the field over cut hay. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys how fast this thing can move. All right. So now you want to go in reverse. So there's two ways, actually there's multiple ways you can go about this. You can press this forward and backward button right here, which I just pressed. Now I'm gonna press the brake and the tractor will come to a stop all on its own without pressing the clutch. Uh, they say that using the clutch on these tractors is preferred. It's easier on the tractor because it can handle it itself. So I just push up to get back to my forward operating gears, release the clutch, the tractor goes back to moving again. You can also go into neutral by pressing this button here. It'll stop the tractor completely. 
with the exception of applying the brakes. It won't apply the brakes. And that's your job. So now I'm stopped. If I want to go in reverse, I can, using the left hand reverser, I can pull it back towards me and push down. Now we're not moving, but the tractor is in the reverse gear. So all I have to do is pull this backward. And the final way to get back to either forward or reverse that I'm aware of is by pushing the control all the way up until the blue bar disappears. Now I can press it forward and the tractor will move forward. It's, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Um, it's just user preference. Usually I do a mixture of this, putting it into in neutral and reversing it and using this. No way. This thing's got a heated seat. <laughs> wow. Now you all have a pretty good idea how to run this thing. The only things that I haven't covered yet are the auto steer options. Um, and here's a three point control. It does the same thing that this thing does, just in a more handy location. And this controls your SCVs as well. Other than that, I've pretty pretty well covered everything to drive one of these tractors. You can drive one yourself now. If you ever get near one of these things, it's pretty comfortable. Travis and I noticed that the seat slides forward and that's pretty cool because you can actually slouch. You're not forced in a nice position all day, which can hurt your back. Everybody slouches a little bit. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video a little educational. Uh, obviously, I don't know everything about this tractor, the do's and don'ts. Um, if you're looking to get started driving a tractor, this is exactly where you'll be driving one of these tractors with CVT transmission. And um, I hope it benefits one of you someday and that you'll be able to drive one of these on your own. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to stay tuned on uh, future videos with this thing. We're still, we've still got some footage coming, so stay tuned. So uh, thanks for watching.